Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Listening to that contribution, I thought, Perhaps there's hope for Jonathan Coleman after all. Perhaps there's hope after all, and perhaps he shouldn't perhaps give up on his leadership ambitions as the longest running audition in New Zealand politics continues to find the successor to John Key. Amy Adams barely gets a pass mark for that contribution because if all that she can do is boast about the fact that they are now spending $350 million a year on emergency housing, if that's her big boast of the signature achievement of this national government, I don't think she's in with much of a chance. Because I don't think that's something they should be boasting about, Mr Speaker. I think that's something they should be ashamed of. Previously, we didn't need $350 million for emergency housing because there are enough houses for the New Zealanders that needed them. And I think that they're boasting about, the fact that they're now boasting about that says everything about how they have gone completely off track. Mr Speaker, the overwhelming message from the national government during this debate has been, this is as good as it gets. The government that used to be ambitious for New Zealand is now telling New Zealanders that they should take what they're given and be grateful for it. They have given up on the hope of building a better future, a brighter future for all New Zealanders. Mr Speaker, I looked to Bill English's speech for a suggestion that the government had a plan for New Zealand's place in the new global order that we seem to now be experiencing. Because the world is changing dramatically around us. The neoliberal consensus that's dominated the world economy over the last 20 or 30 years is crumbling. And it is, that crumbling is being driven as much by the right as it is by the left. And I was looking for some, for some direction from Bill English, for some leadership from Bill English, for where he sees New Zealand fitting in this grand, new, uh, this grand new world order, and there was absolutely nothing. Even the International Monetary Fund, even the International Monetary Fund has been critical of the trickle-down economic theory that's dominated for the last 20 or 30 years, pointing out that the value has not trickled down that it's been captured by those at the top. Was there a word from Bill English on how we ensure that prosperity is shared? No, there wasn't. There was nothing in his, uh, in his contribution. Instead, we simply see a government looking in the rearview mirror to the failed ideas of the past. More privatisation, more shrinking of the state, more, my, more, um, more market, more blind faith in monetary economics, and we don't see a positive vision for the future. They are simply looking backwards. And of course, those, that economic orthodoxy that Bill English is so fond of and that he relies on is failing around the world because, it, because voters increasingly recognise that in the current economy, effort and contribution have been decoupled from reward. There are people out there working hard, trying to get ahead for their families, and they are not and it's not through lack of effort and it's not through lack of contribution, it's because the economic uh, game has been rigged against them. The sea change in attitudes uh, around the world that have seen the UK voting to leave the European Union, that saw Donald Trump get elected in the United States, that have seen the rise of a very alarming rise of the far right throughout Europe, we're not immune from the trends, the underlying trends that have contributed to that. So look uh, offshore. Those who voted to leave, um, the, 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 and the contrasts were quite stark, those who voted to leave the UK or voted for Donald Trump were more likely to live in provincial areas, while those who voted to remain in the European Union or voted for Hillary Clinton more likely to be in the cities. The, the, the towns and the provincial areas expressing their disquiet with the current establishment. Those splits also existed between those who have wealth and those who don't, those who are educated and those who are not, uh, those who um, come from uh, th those who um, are young and those who are old. Those tensions exist in New Zealand as well. And we shouldn't be ignoring the fact that there is a groundswell of concern amongst a lot of New Zealanders that the current economic system is not working for them. Where was the direction from Bill English about that? There was nothing in his contribution. He was simply saying, this is as good as it gets. Get used to what you've got because there are no alternatives. Well, there are alternatives, and uh, I'm still and I think uh, Bill English should be opening his eyes and his ears to those. I wanted to hear from Bill English how the national government are going to tackle the hollowing out of the regions throughout New Zealand. Because make no question about the fact that we have seen uh, 
Take education, for example. We've seen a decline in tertiary education provision. We have seen a decline in manufacturing employment in the regions. Uh, there are people leaving regional New Zealand in search of employment now because they cannot find it in those areas. We're seeing a growing gulf between the shareholding society and the working society. The people who own the capital are doing pretty damn well, while the people who are working to generate the, pro the productivity are not doing so well. Nothing from Bill English and his contribution about how we can deal with that. Nothing in his contribution about the breakdown of the intergenerational compact that has been part of the New Zealand way of life. The current generation of young New Zealanders leaving school and going on to further study will leave that study with more debt than any other generation before, and they will be shut out of the housing market more than any other generation before. We have seen this breakdown of the, inter the intergenerational promise, uh, and Bill English is completely silent on that. He had nothing to say about that at all. The housing crisis cannot be understated. One in seven Auckland houses are now being sold to major property speculators rather than first home buyers or even home buyers. 78% of renters cannot afford a deposit uh, for the average New Zealand home. 78%. That's nearly 80% who are locked out of the uh, ability to buy a house altogether. And their rent is continuing to increase more than their wages are increasing. What are the national government doing? Well, they're selling more state houses. They're not building more houses. How will selling state houses and spending $350 million, as Amy Adams boasted, on emergency housing help that situation? It won't. Mr Speaker, we need a new plan. This government needs a new plan. The Labor Party can offer them a new plan, and it is built on three pillars. Opportunity, security and fairness. A big part of the Kiwi dream, of the Kiwi promise, has been that of opportunity, the promise of opportunity, the opportunity to be educated and to get ahead, the opportunity to find secure, well-paid work, the opportunity to own your own home. These are opportunities that should be available to all New Zealanders, but yet they are not. Let's face some facts about that. Someone who has educated parents is more likely to succeed in the education system themselves. Someone whose parents own their own home is more more likely to be able to own their own home themselves. Somebody, uh, on, the, on the converse, somebody whose parents have been on a benefit is more likely to end up on a benefit. Somebody whose um, parents have been in, engaged in the criminal justice system is more likely to find themselves engaged with the criminal justice system. Our economic and societal structure is not providing a level playing field. It is locking in inequality and disadvantage rather than helping to tackle it. And we can do something about that by making sure that opportunity is shared equally. And we start with that uh, with education. Three years free post-school education. Making sure that the opportunities kids get at school are not dictated by the ability of their parents to pay. And yet increasingly that is happening. Uh, same in early childhood education. The, the quality of early childhood education kids can get is increasingly being dictated by the ability of their parents to pay. That's not the Kiwi promise. That's why we have had, since the 1930s and 1940s, this idea in New Zealand that there should be universal provision of entitlement, of entitlement to education, to health care, to a secure retirement. These are values that we need to rekindle and rediscover if we are going to make sure that economic prosperity, that the benefits of economic growth are shared with all New Zealanders, not just those who are already doing well, as is happening at the moment. Um, so, Mr Speaker, there is so much more that we need to do. Three years free post-school education. Uh, increasing school funding so they're not reliant on parental donations, building houses. This is something that the government should fundamentally be involved with so that we can ensure that the dream of home ownership or even of secure accommodation, rental accommodation for those who can't afford home ownership, is available to all New Zealanders because today, as at right now, it is not. These are things that New Zealanders might have looked to Bill English to address in his uh, speech to the opening of Parliament, and yet they would find all of those things missing. This was a time for Bill English to stamp his mark of leadership on the government, and his mark of leadership simply says that New Zealanders should be grateful for what they've got because this is as good as it gets. I don't think this is as good as it gets. I think New Zealand is a fantastic country. It is full of opportunity, but those opportunities aren't reaching all New Zealanders. And that 
must be our mission, and that will certainly be the mission of the next Labour government. Opportunity, security and fairness for all New Zealanders, not just those who are currently doing well.